Hey, Craft Beer Storm Nation, welcome back. It's Monday, and we have a great interview for you. But first, a word from our sponsor. Hey, craft brewers. The label on your product says everything about you. It had better be good. With six label printing plants and with both digital and flexo capabilities, ID Technology is your local label company with national reach. Short runs, high volume runs, we can handle them all. Apply your labels with ID Technology labeling systems. From simple semi-automatic labelers to integrated rotary machines, we've got you covered. Head over to idtechnology.com forward slash beer to learn more and make sure your products reflect the image you've worked so hard to create. Hey, it's Mike, your host of Craft Beer Storm. How are you doing today? It's Monday. Wake up, wake up. And we will wake up with our next guest, actually, is Peter uh, Jude Ricciardi, and he is from Brand Artica, and he did he did some work with a local brewery here, uh, Woodstock Inn Brewery, which I saw. And I'm like, oh, I got to get him on. It talks about beer and, um, you know, branding. Branding is huge, you know, and, and we're 360 here. We do everything about beer, not just the beer itself, everything about beer. So uh, he has a lot of good stuff, a lot of good knowledge and a lot of good advice. So uh, here we go. And we are here with Peter Jude Ricciardi of Brand Arctic, uh, who's doing good stuff for... Uh, for brewers too, and I wanted to get him on the podcast. Hey. How are you doing, Peter? Good, Michael. Thanks, man. Thanks for uh, inviting me on. No, I, I we met through LinkedIn, and I, I saw your your uh, you know your experience and what you're doing. Especially, you did some work for Woodstock Inn, which is a brewery up in uh, it's like a brewery restaurant up up north. But yep. I wanted to get you on and get get your uh, you know perspective on the industry. You know, marketing, advertising, branding, that's really key to, to breweries as well. I mean, there's so many of them now. I mean, even in New Hampshire, it was like, you know, when I when I started, it was like four and a half years ago. There were like 20 of us. Like, we were sitting around a table. Like, that right. was that was New Hampshire brewery, brewery scene, and now there's like 90 plus. So it's yeah. quadrupled over like four years. It's ridiculous. So even today, I mean, it's even more important to get the branding out and, and design and social media. And then... uh yeah, getting your idea. So what? So tell me, where where did you start? Uh, I think you you started with Disney. Yeah, absolutely. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Michael. I'm going to crack a beer while we're on the phone. <laughs> That's a good idea. Uh, are you ready? All right, go ahead. That is awesome. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> That's one of our um, beers. No, it's not actually. <laughs> I don't have cans anymore. I used to have cans, but I, I give. I delightfully give cold beer, and we'll just we'll leave it at that. All right, um, cool. We'll, on the planet tonight. Beer is at least awesome. in my house. That's um, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I started, you know, it's funny, my, my journey has been one of uh, really just exploration, adventure, passion, and, and you know, just kind of going for it, grabbing it, taking it, and, and going after what it is that I, I, I uh, understood at the time that I wanted. So I landed a job at Disney, and I was there for 15 years. Um, Frankly, I did not go to college. I went for half a heartbeat. I wanted to rock and roll. I wanted to play bass in, in the greatest rock and roll band in the world. And that's all I really aspired to was just uh, creating and performing and, and, and doing that sort of a thing. Um, how I landed at Disney was simply by chance walking into a building just outside of Boston and trying to break in a radio and, and and I asked around when I saw this building being built out and said, you know, what what exactly is going on here? They told me it was a Disney production studio, one of many that would be across the country for ABC Radio and, and Walt Disney Company. And I said, great, you know, um, what can I do? So uh, at the time, I said, I can hang drywall. And they said, great, you know, and this was in the mid to late nineties. So there weren't all the stipulations and insurance, you know, it just wasn't the same ball game. Long story short, they said, great. I said, sure. I have no idea how to hang drywall, but I'll figure it out <laughs> and just sure. let me hang around and watch how this works. Awesome. Um, yeah. 
And you know what? 15 years down the road, I had become, uh, I was a copywriter, I was a voice talent, I was a writer, I was uh, a creative director, and working basically, for the most part, uh, on advertising and marketing for a lot of local Region, you know, regional and local businesses and brands throughout the country, and then a lot of, uh, you know, your more iconic and, and global brands, uh, bringing them into the Disney fold and making sort of uh, creating advertising and marketing brand strategies that aligned with the Disney uh, brand. And yeah. I did it for 15 years. At mm -hmm. the end of 15 years, um, they wanted me to move back out to Los Angeles and I, at the time, was back in Boston, was married, had young children, had already lived in Los Angeles and Burbank for a while. It just wasn't of interest to me. So I decided to break off and do my own thing. I said 15 years the Disney company was fantastic. I learned a lot. I got a lot of great experience out of it, and um, it was time to kind of just move on and do, do my own thing. And that's essentially where... You know what, Brandartica, uh, essentially it's an advertising agency, but we are more or less an advertising anti-agency. That's where that came from. It came out of a desire and passion to create and help other businesses and brands evolve and find their voice and find their own way to communicate uh, via advertising and everything else and via the platform with their audience. So that's, that's where I am today, and I live in the seacoast in New Hampshire with my family, uh, two young girls and my wife and uh, a dog, cat, who will remain unnamed. <laughs> she's just violent and, and nasty. No, she's okay. She's right here in the room. All right. Uh, but that's where I am today. But, um, yeah, what, what interested me, well, you got, you got your LinkedIn is nimble, effective, and wildly creative, right? On LinkedIn, yeah. that's your, uh, your, your kind of slogan there. But that's how breweries have to be actually nimble. Absolutely. Things, things Absolutely. change. Like, I, you know, my whole business plan was shot to hell when uh, cans came out because I, I, like, I was like looking at these bottles, these 22-ounce bottles. I'm like, oh, this is, yeah. you know, I can make money on this. I can do this. And they're cranking them out, cranking them out, and everything went to cans. And I'm like, oh man, this is not good. So it kind of eroded the mar you know, the margin. And um, but you got to shift. You got to and and businesses have you know breweries have gone out of business because of bottling. Like yeah. they they buy these huge bottling lines. They think that's the way it is, or or they'll just go out there I mean, and. Uh, I mean, you know yeah. this. It's yeah. it's a beast. But yeah. to put it, there's there's a few different things going on. Um, to put a great product into a container is one one thing. First of all, to make a great product is is an issue unto itself. Then to get that contain that that product into a container, whether it be glass or aluminum or, for God's sake, some kind of a sack, um, <laughs> you know, that's a whole other ball game. And then. To take it a step further and communicate why your widget is better than anybody else's widget is another beast in and of itself. Right, because there's so many beers out there, and then there's labels, and you know, I mean, it doesn't. It's a combination of things. You just can't have a cool label and expect to sell like all your beer, or yeah. you know, like, uh, well, look at me, and I do an IPA while everybody else does an IPA. What's what's special right. about you? And I see that you've helped a number of um, companies. Actually, Waterville Valley was one of them, and then you, um, yeah. Kume, which is awesome. My kids love that. You know, they, they want yeah. me to take the hibachi. They're like, Dad, we gotta go to hibachi. So, but they have a great, um, great design. And then, what intrigued me is Woodstock Inn and Brewery. And I think they have, and I've heard them like on the river. It's a big station, um, you know, advertising. I think they do like uh, brew weekends where you can go yeah, up and they do brew. Brewery. Uh, Brewers Weekends. So how, how did you help them? I mean, how, like, what did you do? You took them, and, and what happened with them? Here's what happened with, with the Woodstock Inn Brewery, which was uh, right before Brandartica kind of came into fruition. I was doing my own thing as a solo sort of uh, creative director, jack of all trades, master of some. Um, when I met Woodstock Inn Brewery, I was just – brutally honest and and i i say what i mean um when somebody has an ugly baby i'll tell you um and i'm not trying to be uh offensive or or difficult 
But no, I, I appreciate it, the honesty. I, I guess they appreciated it too. And they did. And yeah. I, I honestly, I, my heart was in my throat when I told them. I said, I, I think what you're doing here, I think what you have here is fantastic. I think what, what is being um, communicated to the public is uh, an atrocity. Uh, and, you know, tongue in cheek, and I think it's just wrong. It's you're not getting your best foot forward. So, with those guys, I, I explained to them what I thought about how, how passionate I was about what they were doing and how I understood where they were at. And their commitment was obvious. They'd been 23, 24, 25 years in the business, um, yet their labels and their process their way of communicating what they were doing hadn't changed ever. Um, uh -huh. And that was the, the linchpin. We started with just doing a label redesign for them and they had moved from bottles to cans, as you had mentioned, um, you know, and it was just sort of the trend and where things were going. Um, and the fact was, was that what, what I recognized in their product and brand was that they had a wonderful product. Um, they had a great brand, and I hate to use the word story, but they did. Um, but what they were putting out on the outside of the can was a reflection of the inside. So what I, it doesn't matter what industry you're in, Michael, I, I look at it and say, you know, your your outer shell, how you're presenting yourself to the public, is a reflection directly of what's inside and what the product or service is. And if it's shoddy, if it looks cheap, if it's dated, um, that's a reflection of what's going on inside the can. So frankly, you know, when I go to the store and shop for beers, I'm I'm a I'm an eyeball guy. I'm a, I'm a, a, a aesthetic person. Uh, I, same with wine. I'm a wine drinker. Um, I, I see labels. I see what it says. I see how it looks. I see how it's designed. And, and I make my choices based on look and price. And if the product inside that package is up, up to my personal um, standard or, or my liking, then I, I can continue to be a, a customer. But when the outside of the package looks, can I can I swear? <laughs> yeah, I guess it's fine. All right, I don't want to like <laughs> cause an, an editing. Use a mildly swear, swearing word. I'm I... mild, but I'll be lightly salty. If the outside of the product looks like shit, then it's a pretty <laughs> it's okay. good assumption on, as a consumer that yeah. the inside is as well. Right. So, you know. That's that's where we came in with them, and and we just basically redesigned all their beers, which, mm. um, you know, they had twenty three beers, I think, at the time. Right. So it was a matter of determining um, what what are the the beers that are year round, creating a look that that is familiar, recognizable, and attractive, making it pop. And you know, you mentioned something interesting, Mike, um, with all the art. And all the um, all the looks and styles that you see in the, the craft beer industry today, one thing that I find, um, I think it's it's kind of come and gone. It's a little um, oversaturated. Is and again, don't take this the wrong. Don't, I, I don't want anybody to take it the wrong way. Um, there's this there's this idea that art. Everything's art. Everything's art, 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 art. Let's draw all over the can. Let's make it as wildly crazy and kooky as possible. I look at that and go, the brand, most of those years, the brand is lost. I may see the art. I may be attracted to it, but I have no idea whose beer it is. Right. And that's a, that's a huge failure, I think, on the part of... Um, marketing, advertising, and, and the brewery itself to allow uh, art to overtake the brand itself. Right. I mean, it's just a mess. You know, some of these, these labels are a mess. You don't know what brewery it's from, you know? It's just That's like I mean. wacky just colors all over the place, you know, monsters. Look like energy drinks. Yeah, they look like energy drinks, is right. <laughs> so I mean, you don't know what the hell it is. I mean, you know, and, and I see the cans here. They're very nice, the ones you did for... Uh, Woodstock in with the mountains in the background, and, and it's kind of very defined, and it's kind of there, 
their thing. You know, it's kind of out and there in your face. You also did Herb Chambers. I've been noticing those ads as well. Yeah. Those are good, yeah. you know. So this is. I mean, a it's, great... it's a matter of taking a brand and saying, "What's your voice? What's your style? Let's put a stamp on it mm. and let's just shove it out there and um, make people recognize it." You know, part of it too. It's not all about the art. It's there's a lot to do with the layout and design, as you well know. I'm sure that uh, what is it? The uh, alcohol, tobacco, firearms. Um, the TTB industry, yeah. you know, oversees these labels. Yeah. And they've got their own set of um, rules and regulations of what can be said and how you say it. And so to me, not only the design and the look of a beer matters, but what you say, how you describe. You know what we did that I think was a little bit different, or I'll go out and say it's a lot bit different. We took Woodstock and said, you know, we're going to stop with all this BS about, well, it's a, you know, it's a delightfully hoppy, crafted, handcrafted beer, blah, 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 with notes of caramel and who, this is my opinion, who cares? Beer is fun. <laughs> beer should be fun. Right. And beer needs to, you know, give me the essentials. Tell me if it's an IPA. Tell me if it's a double IPA. If it tastes like coffee, great. Let me know. If it's got, uh, uh, pairs well with chocolate cake, let me know. But let's make it fun. Let's make the copy on the beer, the description. I wanted it to be something that people would go, did you did you see what this beer says? <laughs> this beer says it's brewed. It's not an apple cinnamon ale. It says it's brewed for the pumpkin intolerant. It says this beer says, you know, they have an IPA that says it's, it's uh, just hoppy enough to make you forget you dropped your cell phone in the visitor center toilet. <laughs> it's about creating conversation. Yeah. Beer is fun. Beer is about enjoyment. And it's, it's at some point, I think it became this smarmy wine ish thing where people thought it was more important to talk about, you know, uh, how important and how, how handcrafted it was. Well, for yeah. gosh sake, it's all handcrafted for them, unless you're drinking a Bud Light or a Corona Refresh, which is disturbing. Um, you know, <laughs> I haven't had that. Is it? It's a refresh. That's the point. Yeah, it's not like a Corona refresh. It's it's like this gross. It's like a spiked seltzer of sorts. Oh my like god! Corona. That's as the, if it couldn't get worse. I don't want to start bashing beers, but I don't know. Yeah, that's, no, sorry. But that's okay. Saying. No, that that's your opinion. That's fine. That's fine. Right. But I um, hey, you know, that's your opinion or whatever. But I like your labels, and and you just kind of it kind of just like it stands out. And I, I remember the Woodstock Inn. It was kind of dark. The yeah. uh, the art. It's like, all right, yeah. they were kind of like going for the woods and the dark, and this is like, bang. It's like, you know, you have the aluminum can, you have, sp yep. you know, peaks, very pronounced yep. stuff, and then just in-your-face kind of stuff, like live free or die, uh, kank country, like s slam, boom. We, so we put really together a, a title for them and said, you know, um, this beer is now made with 100% more New Hampshire. It's <laughs> good. Tell yeah. me it isn't. That's great. You know what I mean? Um, it's it's about putting together um, content. And and frankly, um, you know, this redesign for them, there was two parts to it. There were the mainstay seasonal look, which the mountains you talk about, um, you know, everybody wanted to put mountains on the beer. And we kept saying, uh, everybody put mountain. Everybody in New Hampshire puts mountains on the beer. Yeah, it's like putting a hop on the beer. Yeah, we know it's. Uh, we know what it's made with. It, um, you know the CBD and uh, the the hemp and cannabis industry is now afflicted with the same idea. Um, everybody puts a pot leaf on the product as if we don't know mm -hmm. and. You know, I look at that and go, yeah, that's great, but it looks like everything else. So when we approached the mountain aspect, we, we looked at it and said, how can we take 
this dark sort of dated look still offer the mountains because you know um that's really what they wanted um and say how can we can make it contemporary how can we make this a piece of art and you know what that look ends up being ultimately we call it the um the lift ticket mm -hmm. it looks like a lift ticket now they have a limited uh yeah. line of 16 ounce cans which we went with a different look which is more of a if if someone were to well you live in new england or you visit new england and you you looked at the sky across the four seasons or the the eight seasons the nine seasons that we seem to have these days um it would look like standing in the mountains standing on the roof of a cabin and looking at the white mountain sky over the course of the seasons and we wanted to develop two different looks for two different styles of, of product that were identifiable immediately and would jump off the shelf. And that's what they do. And that's great. How long if yeah, they yeah. how long has it been until they the, since they rebranded everything? It's been two years. Okay. And then sales Yeah. And sales this, really for yeah. them took off. You know, but on that note, you know, you look at it and you go, what are the trends? What are the, is there, are there trends in craft beer? Absolutely. Um, everyone's obsessed with putting coffee in stouts. I don't know why. I like a, a nice, subtle coffee in a stout, but, you know, everybody's doing it. Sours, what, do you, what are your thoughts on sours, Mike? Sours have to be done correctly, you know. I think yeah. if, if a lot of people do sours and it's vinegar, it's better for a salad. You know, that's the <laughs> truth. You want to talk about the truth? Yeah. <laughs> I no, went I, in I, once. I, had, I went into a restaurant. They had all sours. I'm like, oh, my God. And I'm like trying, and I'm like, dude, put this on my salad. I can't drink this thing. Yeah. You know. Yeah, there's some – I've had – you know, it took, me, it took me a few tries and a few different brands here and there to go. Um, I'm not buying this. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not 100 percent in. Now I found a few at least that I go. Oh, I get it. Especially in the hot weather, I get it. Yeah. Um, it could be it refreshing. refreshing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's refreshing, but it's funny. I'll, I'll I'll give a sour that I think is just top notch to a friend who's more of a traditional craft beer drinker, and you know, it's like I handed him a a, a glass of apple cider vinegar. <laughs> That's what one guy well, did. I, I don't know if you saw the episode of Shark Tank. There was a brewer on there. He tried to get money out of the sharks for, yeah. uh, and then the freaking guy gave him all, the, you know, a couple nice beers, like three nice beers. And then the last beer they gave to him was like a sour. And I'm like, yeah. what the hell is this? And then they just, they said, no, we're not giving you any money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like what, what know. kind, what the hell possessed them to give him a sour beer? What is wrong with Jeez, this guy? You probably should have started with the sour and and gone on to your your. Uh, I, I, if you winter. wanted to make a point, I don't know, but sours are not really you Did know we we don't live in a sour culture. Like I was talking to some brewers and you know like Germany, that's kind of a sour based food, sauerkraut, and even like uh, Brazil or something like that or Portugal, maybe there might be some sour based foods, but here we do not have a sour based society, so. To give, to give these guys you know, a sour, I don't know what the hell they were th thinking. You want to drink, people that want to drink beer are not, I, this is my opinion again, uh, and I'm full of them, more full of it, if you will, depends on who you ask. Um, they're not counting, it's not about the calories. They want to drink something that is um, delicious, something that's sourced. Uh, reasonably well or intelligently, um, and they want you know they want to have the, the the point of drinking beer is fun. Um, yeah, you know if I just if I'm thirsty I'll have a glass of water or fifteen seltzers, um, but when I want to drink a beer I want to drink something that um, I enjoy. I want to hold something, and especially I think this comes into play where you talk about millennials. I think for millennials. Um, and again, I don't mean to uh, pigeon, you know, pigeonhole or paint them into a box. Um, I think for millennials, uh, the beer you're drinking is a badge of honor these days. So mm -hmm. 
people select their beers based on look, based on what their friends tell them. They drink, they want to hold a beer that makes other people go, oh, what do you got? They want to open a cooler and have people look in and go, ooh. Um, and, and that is where you start to draw lines in going, well, is it, does it look cool and is it good? Or, you know, does it look good and is it bad? You know, people start to, 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 to determine, but you have to have some kind of a style that makes people uh, outside that party, outside the cooler, if you will, um, recognize who you are, what you're selling, and if they identify with it. Most of all, do they like it? And secondly, is it something they identify with? Yeah. That's how I buy my beer. And I'm 50, and I've been buying a beer a long time. Right. No, I think, I think it's very important, the brand. Um, so what else, I mean, instead of labels, what else do you help uh, companies with in terms you of know, we, like branding? We've everything and... from their social media to their websites. Um, I mean, outside of beer, you know, you talk about shelf talkers, you talk about labels, you talk about sell sheets, anything for a brand that is customer facing or uh, brand, you know, business to business facing. It all matters, Michael. It oh, yeah. all matters. Yeah. So you can do a wonderful, you can have a great business in an awesome tasting room and some great food. And then what are you showing your distributors? What are you showing the people inside? How are you representing it? So outside of, you know, the same theory applies to restaurants. It applies to hospitals, um, banks. One of the Brand Arctica clients right now, we uh, work with Franklin Savings Bank, which is a community bank out of um, Franklin, New Hampshire. They're slowly bleeding down into the southern part of the state, but they're mostly up in, you know, your Goffstown, Tilton, Bosco, and uh, I'm probably saying that wrong. Um, but, like, for a bank, how do you represent your brand? Every single bank on the planet tells us what. We've got friendly tellers. We're knowledgeable about money. Mm -hmm. um, it's easy to bank here. I mean, that's like... That's akin to dentists saying, kids love coming here. <laughs> it's bullshit. And everybody knows it. <laughs> so you have to find a different way to right. portray it. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, with a bank, I, I look at, at uh, this, this client for us is all about not only being transparent, but you know, slightly bucking the system a little bit. So when you think about... Uh, a product that's trying to appeal to college students. So if it's a bank or it's a beer, um, everybody takes the same approach. Uh, generally, they say, "Oh, you're young, you're millennial, you, you know, you're technologically savvy, but you don't know anything about doing laundry. You'll ruin the laundry, or you have to call your mom." That's baloney. I mean, these these kids are savvy. These kids are knowledgeable. These people understand why diminish their um, intelligence by coming at them in a way that doesn't make sense. Um, they're the leaders of tomorrow. So we like to come into these things and say, how can we help you through social media, through print advertising? I mean, gosh, if I see another print advertisement for anybody that laundry lists everything they do or everything they offer, mm. it's disturbing. It's unfortunate. Mm. Give me but, the highlights. Yeah, the highlights and also what, what, what these companies can do for them. And there's a lot of transparency these days, too, because of social media. It's kind of exposing everybody. You can't hide anymore. You can't. It's your, you, you're you out there and you, you have to put you have to tell them what you can do for them. You, know? you put your best foot forward. But, you know, my theory is this. No matter what industry it is, Mike, uh, let, me, let me make my own decision. But leave me asking for more. Make me want to ask for more. Mm. Don't under-inform. Mm. Make me ask for more. I want to be enthused. I want to be um, excited. I want to be compelled is my one of my favorite words. Um, 
You know, not you know, Woodstock Inn Brewery was a good example as far as it was a beer, it's an inn, it's a restaurant. And one of the things we put together for them was saying instead of saying, We're a great place in a special land or we're this, we're that, we're we're, we're all these things with a thousand bullet points about what we do and what we offer. We went back and said, What's the core? Mm. Stay, play, eat. Yeah. Everything else, if I show you a gorgeous picture, a gorgeous picture, and I say, Come to stay, come, come, plan, come to play, plan to stay. That was, the, that was the line. Come to play, plan to stay. When you go up to the White Mountains, you go up there to hang out and to play and to, to be engaged and entertained and have fun. Um, you need a place to stay. So how do we break it down? And whether it's beer, you know, it's, 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 it's you know, enjoy, drink, share. It's, it's just about boiling down the, the basics of what the brand offers and does, mm -hmm. allow people an opportunity to investigate for themselves, because that's how you draw them into your website. That's how you draw them into your business. That's how you draw them in. Everything to me is a slight gate, a small gate, a small gate. Let you in, let you in, let you in. And once you're all the way across that brick and mortar threshold, I got you. Yeah. Draw them in. Unless, you know, you screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> and then everyone says you suck and nobody comes back. <laughs> That's right. I, you, we all know in today's digital world with Yelp and TripAdvisor, oh. uh, people are... are yeah. More, people are more than happy to voice their negativity. Oh, slam, slamming. Right? You know, even some breweries, you know, I mean, get slammed. And I'm like, these people don't know what they're talking about. You know, maybe, the, maybe I don't know, they'll buy a bottle. Maybe it was off or something. They'll but just go happens. on and do a and rant. I, I mean, I, stuff I, happens where I, people I, exploded into, you know, something big. Like, it's a big, big you know, detriment to the brewery. They they're, they have a serious pro a problem in their brewery, but it's not. It's just, but uh, yeah. you just got to kind of. I look at that and I say, yeah. you know what, man? If your Facebook page has nothing but five stars, five star reviews, something's fishy. Yeah. You just got to. Well, you're always going to have that, the outliers, you know, so. I want to see a few bad reviews. You know, what's most important to me as a, as a consumer it doesn't matter whether it's a, if it's an Airbnb or a, a drink or, or a restaurant. Um, if I see a few bad reviews, same same goes with like shopping on Amazon. Um, if I see nothing but five star reviews, it's fishy. If I see a couple of um, negative reviews, what's most important to me, and one of the things we try to do for clients is help them understand and help them. Uh, negotiate or mediate um, the response because how you respond to someone that says you suck and why um, matters to everyone else it may not it may not bring that person back because frankly anybody that goes out of their way to um, vocally you know uh, tear you down um, chances are you're not going to win them back they're either they're either doing it because that's what they do or they're doing it because they want you to give them a $25 gift card and they'll do it over and over and over again. I found that with Kume, you know, every time someone gave a negative review, they gave them a $25 gift card. Guess what? Guess, guess what was happening? <laughs> right. That's crazy. <laughs> got out. Um, but how you responded to people, um, yeah. you know, and that's something that I think is important, whether it's craft beer, you know, you get a bad beer. Everybody yeah. puts out a bad beer. We don't all have Anheuser Busch money. Oh yeah. Quality control. You know what I mean? Stuff happens. I mean so. stuff happens. Yeah. And um how a small business or how a small brewery responds to it, uh, can make or break them. I'm happy to see that uh, a brewery or, or a tasting room has a few negative reviews, um, but how they respond to it 
is everything for me yeah. to see. Like, will I will I move forward and go there or try them or, you know, um, if their response is negative yeah. and confrontational, I go, well, these guys. Yeah, you don't want to be confrontational. You know, whenever somebody puts a bad review about us, there's very few. But um, when they do, I'm like, I'm sorry to hear, you know, your, your problems. I'm not sure what happened. Please come back in again. Beer's on me. I'll give you a tour. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. Free bottles on me, whatever. Just to make sure that they're okay. And, and sometimes they say, well, that's very nice of you. Yes, I'll be in next weekend. Thank you very much. Blah, blah, blah. Sometimes they're just silent, you know, and they don't say anything. I'm like, look, I tried. You know what, I what are you going to do? do? Is, I would say, why don't you um, contact us via phone? Give give me a ring. Um and yeah. most people will, the people that will opt into that, they actually have a genuine problem and had a bad experience and they're willing to take it up and, and fix it because the offer to fix it goes beyond, um, let me give you something to, to, you know, let me give you a band aid. It, it's let me, let me create something that, that, you know, fixes this for you. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's a healing process rather than a a you know band aid process. So, yeah. um, but it is you you're working in a great industry. It's so much fun. I don't think that it's so funny going from Disney, and Disney had the most stringent, strict, over the top legal um, standards and guidelines you can imagine yeah so i worked within that realm for a long time and used to have to find ways to work not around it but the loopholes and in in our in this business with craft beer and the design and the product and the advertising same with cannabis or you know many other things that are uh, prescriptive uh you have to be clever and and what 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 it is that they'll accept on one day isn't always the same or deny on one day is not always the same as what they'll accept on another day you yeah. just have to be clever right wow it's really good awesome information really great stuff wow i want to yeah i want to meet you for coffee or a beer actually yeah. <laughs> i want to talk yeah, to you man, more I'll but meet for- we got to do it. You know? We got to do it. But um, I want to wind down. As you wind down here, how can people reach you if they want to talk to you further about your, uh, you know, you, sure. what you can do for them? They can um, visit. They can follow us at brandartica.agency on Instagram or Facebook. Um, I can be reached directly at uh, peter at brandartica.agency or info.agency if that's easier. Uh, uh, info at brandartica.agency um, but yeah our whole, our whole concept Michael was to go you know I, after working for Disney for 15 years my partner Kevin who is uh, a Boston veteran of the media and design and agency scene we said you know again not to knock agencies but there's there's this level of unnecessary cost, yeah. unnecessary uh, engagement and middle people. So what we did by becoming an anti-agency or an advertising anti-agency was just say, we're going to knock that out. We're going to stop this bullshit. Yeah. You're the client. I'm the creative. He's a creative. We're the partners of the business. We run the thing. We own the thing. You're going to talk to us directly every single time. Right. There's no, there's no need to put somebody in the middle to translate your vision, your dream, or your need to the person who's actually pushing the buttons. That's awesome. Because all that does is create a cost that doesn't need to exist. No. You know? So a lot of people, I think, find themselves going, well, I'll do it myself, or "Eh, I know how to do this, or I... I." We're trying to fill a need or a void where we say, you can have high-quality... Very, you know, this isn't just about design. This is about branding. This is coming in with a Disney point of view, not Disney, haha, mouse ears, but like saying, how can we take you from soup to nuts, from the oh, roots, yeah. leaves, and help you tell your story or your communicate yeah. your brand in a way that uh, is effective? 
Uh, and that's where you get the nimble, the effective. And if you haven't picked up on it yet, um, I'm wildly creative. We are that's a great. wildly creative bunch. You have we a like lot. people things that they would never freaking dream of. Well, that's why we need people like you to, to think about yeah. that. And you have a lot of energy and you're channeling it in good stuff. So that's great. So I, I appreciate no you being B, on. Michael. There's no plan B. Uh, this is no. what I do. There's no plan business. B. You got to do it. You, you got to take plan B and I listen to Andy Frasilla. He's like, throw it in a can, <laughs> pee There's on no it and way. put it on and light it on back. fire. <laughs> no. That's your plan B. So, uh, it. yeah, you got a lot of energy and Disney has been a fantastic uh, asset of yours and they've been wildly successful and uh, I think that's it shows in what you've been doing and I appreciate you being on uh, and giving us this uh, perspective on branding and, and, and bring it into the beer realm. It's been fa- it's been really great to talk to you and uh, yeah, let's get together. We got to do some. Thanks, Michael. But yeah, I mean, we should. Let's but, do I, it. I, but we'll talk to you soon. Thanks very much. All right, buddy. All right, take Cheers. care. All right, bye. Yep, that was Peter Jude Ricciardi of Brand Artica, and he, uh, you can see, he knows what he's talking about. He worked for Disney, which is huge. Those guys are killing it all over the place. And they own Marvel, too. I didn't even know this. Marvel's huge, like Avengers, crazy stuff. Uh, but he, he was involved with all that stuff, and uh, he broke out on his own. He's a really great guy if you want to talk about branding. I'm meeting him next week for coffee uh, because I want to talk to him about what I'm up to. And, uh, you know, I, I, he's he's a good guy and he deals with you directly. Like there's no middleman, uh, which is which is great, you know, because you want to talk to the owner. Uh, you, you get his knowledge, get his two cents, and uh, it's a good thing. So, and he's helping the beer world and he's just, you know, come, he's straight out with people, which is brutally honest you you want to be that and i want people to be that with me and people have been (laughs) been that way with me but that's cool that's what i want so and if you got any uh ideas or criticisms or or praise or you know give me praise uh, email me michael at craftbeerstorm.com uh we're on instagram we're on facebook twitter linkedin where are we everywhere youtube check it out we got videos going out. I got my podcast three, three, three a week. Monday we're doing uh, um, people like Peter in the industry, brewers, founders. Uh, Wednesday we're doing beer styles. We take a different style from the Great American Beer Festival list and we explore it, break it up, tell you what's in the beer, what glass to serve it in, examples, all that stuff. Good stuff. And then Friday we do craft brew news, which is the drama, which is craft beer. A lot of stuff going on, crazy stuff. But uh, if you like what you're hearing, please go on iTunes. Give us a rating and review. That would help us tremendously. Tell a friend. Tell 10 friends. Because we are here for you, giving you all this content. You love beer. I love beer. We all love beer. And beer is a good thing. Right? Okay, guys. I will see you on Wednesday. Take care. <laughs>